Ah, oh, glorious. Drew making old man noises, not realising the mic's live. Well, just reaching around behind me, trying to find things, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to prepare a show here. It's just a not... You, you've got no idea, darling. I have no idea. Oh, dearie me. Um, anyway, welcome to the Sunday service, everybody. Um, we've got we've got an action-packed show tonight, haven't we? We've got quite a few things to cram in, so... Um, a full schedule of uh, things to talk about and our own modeling projects as well. Um, so, and I've finished uh, finished quite a few this way. Oh, you'll be disappointed, Drew. I've actually finished model projects. Well, you're ahead of me. So that's something. Wow. Um, so, uh, before we go any further, we're just going to we'll say a big hello to everybody who's turned up nice and early. So, uh, hello to Russell Taylor in Connecticut. Uh, he says, where it can't make its mind up, whether it's winter or spring. That sounds like an average day in the United Kingdom, <laughs> um, any day between January to January, really. Oh, that's, that's Connecticut spelled Somerset. Absolutely, yeah. Glue smeared nonsense says, hello all. Mark Ryan, Alan Richardson, Nine Bolts, Phil, Nick Brown, Kev Tinker, Peter Oxley, Ofer Cohen, Davian Mullen, Jet Scale Models, Kitchen Table Modeler. Good Lord. Um, uh, Dougal McWoogle, Jim Altergott, Tony Vaughan, John Huston. Rob Suto or Sutto, Philip Jones, Simon Lewis, Wayne BT, uh, Plastic Scholar, Powell Krupovic. Powell, we will get you on the show at some stage. Um, also, Christopher Joseph Buchholz, we are definitely getting him on the show again because he's a blast. He's absolutely hilarious. Um, Whether he likes it or not. Yeah, absolutely. Simon Lewis, Jerry Doyle, Mike Williams, uh, Paul Cave, John Connolly, some bloke called Spencer Pollard. I've never heard of him. Um, Carlos Ruiz. Anyway, Drew, we've, yep. got, um, we've got stuff to talk about tonight. So what should we do? Should we go into... Um, Shall we go straight into the news, or shall we talk about our projects first of go all? Go on, hit us with your projects, baby. Okay. Um, uh, okay, okay. I've finished um, some. Uh, I finished some of my Dune models. Uh, coincidentally, at the same time, I went to the cinema to see Dune Part Dieu, which is absolutely cracking. Have you seen it yet? I, I haven't. I'm waiting to watch it on uh, on on TV because I I don't tend to go to the cinema these days. Okay. Okay. Um, um, I mean, I, I did. Uh, I have to say, the second the second viewing of the first one, um, it did finally click with me in a big way, and I really really loved it. So I'm yeah. looking forward to seeing the um the 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 continuation, shall we say? Yeah. No. Part two is just oh, it's spe it's spectacular, mm. but it's. It's not an action-packed film. It's it's such a dichotomy, anyway. Um, but um, there we go. So these are some of the Meng uh, Dune kits. So this is the House Harkonnen or Harkonnen. That's their ornithopter. Um, then we have um, uh, oh, the image is gone. Oh well, the image is gone. Only only you and I. Um, then we have the. Um, Spice Harvester. Spice Harvester. Oh my goodness! Me. I love the Spice Harvester. I think it's such a great, it's such a wonderfully realised vehicle. Yep, yep, absolutely. It really is. Um, um, and the fun I had weathering that because it was just simplicity. It was literally covering it with a sludge wash and then removing it with a stiff brush. And it, yeah, and and it, and, and it, you know, you can do almost anything you want with it. I mean, mine is mine is sat next to me here painted. Yeah, um, waiting, waiting to start the weathering process. Yeah, um, and um, I, I, I've, I've got a feeling I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a different route to you, and I'm gonna use more airbrushed light buff sort of colours and see yeah. how that works. Just yeah, because, no, just, just because it's different. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, absolutely. Um, so much, but but the level of the the level of detail on these is just astounding. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they really are, and and they are, they are so tiny as well. I mean, that is, 
Um, I'm just going to go and grab it. Actually. Well, no, if you cut to the, if you cut to a top view, John. Yeah. My top view. Yeah. There we go. Hang about. There you um, go. That's yeah. that's what people are looking at on that photograph. Yeah. That well, is spice harvester. Yeah. Have you ever been to a spice harvester before? Um, mm. Well, here we go because I'm not going to be outdone, mate. Because dun, 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 there yeah. we go. It's, it's, it's absolutely tiny. Yeah. Um, but it's just so so well detailed. Yep. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And these are these are just about short of a tenner, aren't they? Uh, they're about twelve quid. They're about yeah. twelve. They're about twelve quid. But um, yeah. I, I mean, I, I think they're just. You know, and I don't know. I don't know about you, but getting. I mean, mine hasn't got the tracks on it yet because I'm doing them separately. Yeah. Uh, there's a. Um, <laughs> the, like I said, I'm doing them separately. You know, there's the mm -hmm. there's the Harkin and there's my Harkin and mm -hmm. uh, but I'm doing the track separately like this. Yeah. Um, but this is about. I don't know. Assembly was less than an hour. Mm -hmm. Um, and painting so far, it it got a bla got a heavily blasted coat of. Um, Mr. Color Mahogany primer on it. Mm -hmm. It's had some mist coats on top of that, but that, I mean, there's. Is that know, my, my, my intention is to um, to to do some edge highlights and picking out like that and yeah. and going, um, going a bit more arty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going going a bit more arty and a bit yeah. more sort of um, extreme, if you like. Is that um, olive and, drab? Eh? Is that olive drab? No, no, that's that's mahogany with some. Oh, it's um, the Mr. Color mahogany. Right, it's okay. Mr. Color mahogany primer, the yeah. um, fifteen hundred. Yep. Yeah. Uh, with some misted coats over it of sort of um, Vietnam, Southeast Asia tan and and dark earth and stuff, just to yeah. just to break it up a little bit. It's just it's fantastic. I I, I love them. I think they're great. And mm -hmm. um, when the uh, when the big seventy second scale Atreides. Um, Ornithopter is released. I am mm -hmm. um, front of the queue. Yeah. <laughs> I like um, Jim says um, if the Spice Harvester was a mini art kit, there would be a full interior model available. <laughs> they would. They would. They would be going for it. Um, yes. <clears throat> anyway, uh, and so that's that's June. June, very good. Um, brilliant film. Uh, I also managed to finish off one for the home team. Which was my little one forty third scale Airfix um, Land Rover. This is one of their kind of like um, uh, kind of not not easy kits, but you know what I mean. They're, yeah, they're yeah. kind of starter set ones. Um, absolutely no vice vices whatsoever. And again, forty third scale. scale yep. Yeah. And again, it's just uh, an absolute blast for weathering. A bit like the Spice Harvesters. This also got a sludge wash of um, some humbrol pigments and some water, and it was just slathered over the whole model, allowed to dry. And then I went at it with a with a stiff old brush and just got rid of the excess. It's it's such a cheats way of doing weathering, but do you know what? It gets results. <laughs> do you know what? I can remember <clears throat> what I, what what did I build for for. Andy, Mr. Farmer, was it the was it the Cromwell? Um, yes, was it the yeah. Cromwell I built? And yeah. I can remember at the end of that, I, I was sort of experimenting with um, uh, uh, pigments, yeah. and I, I I put a lot of pigment on it at the very end, and mm -hmm. I let it dry, and I went back and looked at it, and I went, oh no, I've completely ruined it, haven't I? And I went at it with a brush and some soap and water. And removed about ninety percent of what I could, and thought, right, I'll let it dry and see what I can recover from this. I went mm -hmm. back to it when it's dry and went, that looks amazing. <laughs> That's exactly what I, I got, wanted. I think you've got to do that sometimes. Is that you've you've literally got to walk away from a project and come back to it, and then see then see how you feel about it. Yeah, and, I mean, um, it really, but I, you know, for for for, for a couple of days. Towards the end of that build, I thought I had really, really balked it. You mm -hmm. know, I, I thought I was going to be making excuses to Mr. Farmer as to why there was going to be a delay because I had to strip and restart. And, mm -hmm. and then I, I went back to it and went, oh, my word, that's amazing. That's that's mm -hmm. exactly what I wanted. Yeah. Dave uh, Dave makes a good point. It says, painting the chassis on the landy is a bit tricky if you're following the instructions and paint it in two colours. Yeah, I didn't, Dave. I just, I literally just 
painted it one color, then colored the bottom it's, in mud. It's a, it's a curbside model. Why would it's, you? Well, it's 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 an agricultural landy as well. So, um, and Philip says, uh, did you enjoy June, part two June film, John? I did, Philip. I thought it was magnificent, absolutely splendid. And Plastic Scholar asks, Slugwash. He, he says, can you give us, could you give us your Slugwash recipe or, di or or direct me to where i can find it as i'm sure you've given it before i think i have done a pop-up live uh plastic scholar i will dig it out if not i will do another pop-up live at some stage it's very simple it is just literally just grab some pigments any any pigments will do just mix in some water until it's uh, what the consistency you know like a a good thick a thick mix that will spread and that's it just slather it over the model let it dry and then go at it with a with a stiff old brush and have fun um at the very worst if it doesn't work you can just chuck the model in some water and wash it all off so and this is the beauty of using water so um uh anyway uh so yeah there we go that was the landy and then finally mock is obviously on a bit of a car spree at the moment because he um, he was uh, painting his <clears throat> Fujimi Mini with uh, British Racing Green from a Tamiya can and following Ian Hartup's advice, went at it with the Trizac um, and flattened, flattened it down. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it was one of those things where I thought, am I, am I doing this right? And, um, but... Uh, Ian, uh, we did this live last Sunday. Ian's advice was just don't worry about it, just flat it down, then put another coat on. I put another coat on of the Tamiya British Racing Green. Oh my goodness me, ladies and gentlemen, that finish! It's it's incroyable. I I said to Ian, I'm going to cut my losses here because that's the finish I've been looking for. Um, so. Um, yeah, it, it the the process works and the tries act. Does yeah, it's, work. It's, you've got to you know you have to say to people, don't worry about it. It's it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same sort of not argument but explanation we make every time we talk about using VMS varnish. Mm. Look, you're gonna you're gonna flood it on till it's almost running. Mm. Don't worry about it. Put it to one side. Walk away. Come back. And marvel at what you've produced. Yeah, you know, but people just uh, it, there's a there's a tendency perhaps to fuss over something while you're doing it, and over fuss and not have the sort of not be brave enough to walk away and leave it and, and trust mm -hmm. the process. Mm -hmm. yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, I find the same with varnishing any kind of even applying a gloss coat before decals. The thing is, when when a when a coat of paint is wet a speck of dust looks enormous in it you walk away and come back a few hours later and you've got a glossy finish but you can't even see where that speck of dust was yeah the, the the way it sort of pulls 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 and and edges around you know mm -hmm. a a floor just magnifies that floor immensely when yep. it's dried and pulled down into the finish everything looks fine yeah. Mike Williams asks a question. He says, did you decant the Tamir Racing Green or straight from the aerosol? Mike, straight from the aerosol. The only thing I did was I warmed it up in a mug of water and got it, got the can nice and kind of like, you know, warm, essentially. And um, and then gave it uh, gave it a good shake, let it kind of settle for a while, then just... Uh, the second time round, I actually put on quite a wet coat. And I, but again, it's kind of like trust the paint. Uh, the paint knows what it's going to do. So it's it's already got a coat on there. It will, and yeah, absolutely. I mean, the thing is, with most of these, with the most modern paints, if you haven't actually pulled it on to the point where it's running, you've got to remember more than 95% of what you've put on the model is going to evaporate away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so yeah. the vast majority of what you lay down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just going to go. And here's um, somebody else who's given me absolutely indispensable advice when it's come to finishing, and that's Jen. So good evening, Jen. Um, we'll definitely have Jen on the show again. Who is a, who is and, a professional sprayer. Uh, exactly. 
Precisely. <laughs> no. um, and Chris, Christopher Joseph Bookholt says, we had many years of non-trustworthy products in the hobby, so modern materials cause anxiety when they're first used. Funny that, Drew and I were having a conversation, an off-air conversation, um, uh, on this very subject that I'm trying to get some paints to spray at the moment, and they ain't working. <laughs> and no, and, and you know it's not mm. a case of we've had so many. We had many years of non-trustworthy products. We still do. Mm. We 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 still do get um, new new sort of ranges of whatever released with, with every promise under the sun of how it's going to revolutionise the hobby, and and you just do this circle around them and try them and circle straight back to you know what you trust in my case you know generally speaking mr color mm -hmm. um you know i mean uh, ak real colors are just about to release a a completely new range of ak real colors um you know they've completely overhauled it and and so what we're going to do is i'm going to circle around those and try them and see what we get um and you know i would like to think they focused on the accuracy of the color because the actual paint is fine um, paint is fine. Paint is uh, and, and 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 see what happens mm. um but talking about um yeah uh, ak real color this is uh, this has been my my project of the week oh lovely um, a little uh, uh a little edward uh s199 beautiful yeah i mean this is about five six days work so far so i i'd hope to get it finished in under a week i think i'm probably going to go eight or nine days before i get it finished uh but that was uh that was the overall coat there is ak real color mm -hmm. um, which i think is a really nice representation of the uh of that that green that they used um it's an, it's an automotive green isn't it uh it's uh i think the the rlm uh sorry the uh RAL code is 6013 it's uh is it not jade green um i can't remember the the actual description of the color but actually it looks a bit greener in the image uh, on on screen than it is in real life in real life it's actually a bit more um Great. a little bit more browny olivey right than than it, than it appears here but yeah i mean this the, these little edward 72nd 109s uh are you know just fantastic models just mm -hmm. absolutely brilliant um and and you know they go together a dream um and they started off for the s and cs 199 so yeah that's that, that's where we are i've, I've used the, the kit decals which are, you know they're getting better and i've removed the film from most of them yeah most of the, most of the big ones and you know they, they look you know certainly they're certainly good to remove the film i think off of things like those big fuse large materials because that is literally just that that is as close to painted on as it gets now because it's literally just the ink is left on the model um so, so have yeah you that, have you reconciled yourself to their to their decals or, or do you still have misgivings about them i still have misgivings about the quality of the printing um right. now in, in 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 this instance if i get more than you know if i'm if i'm more than six or eight inches away the printing looks fine if you get closer than that it's, it starts to to get a little bit um it goes a little bit awry but they mm -hmm. but the point is you know um when i built the cs 109 the, the twin seater i built a couple of years ago in silver uh the decals there you could be a foot away and they still look terrible mm. so the, the the printing is improving to the point where uh black blacks and whites they seem to sort out fairly quickly uh actual colors like um you know red and blue there if you get very very close you can you can't really see it on here it's not really good enough quality um but the closer you get you can start to see some fading in and out and some blotchiness mm. and stuff like that so i mean I, i'm reconciled in as much as these are here to stay they're not going anywhere mm -hmm. so we need to learn to use them um and you know hope that they continue to refine the quality of the inks yeah um and and you know that that that's about all we can all we can do or continue looking for options but like i say as a as a um as a product these these markings are here to stay mm -hmm. um so we need to we need to get used to them or get used to finding alternatives mm -hmm. and i don't think there are too many alternatives for uh czechoslovakian s199s 
<laughs> if you know what I mean. Mm. It, it's a bit limited. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. Um, but, yeah, just absolutely glorious little models these are. Um, mm -hmm. Really quick builds, go together very quickly. Uh, fit is just pretty much as good as fit gets on models. Um, and and you're away. So, yeah, that's uh, that's been my um, – the, the Abrams that I was on a couple of weeks ago. I've, um, let's have a look. The, the All Abrams. right, I'll, I'll answer that question in a second. So the the yeah. Abrams is has been sort of on on the back burner a bit, but I've I've spent a bit of time and um, is that the amusing hobby word? Uh, no, panda, panda, All right, panda. So uh, I, I remember Spencer talking about the um, side skirt detail that you'd have to add to the Tamiya one. And I looked at this one and went, eh, yeah, okay. So Spencer guilted me into so I, I took a bit of time out and added some detail along. The side skirts here and some extra fastener detail along the side skirts here um so to, to up the detail them up a bit we've seen the uh we've seen the gun barrel that i printed which has come out rather rather nice i have to say ultimately yeah, you're, get, you're getting good at this aren't you with a little bit of cleanup um and i didn't like the um i didn't like the uh the the wind sensor on the kit so um again i sat down with fusion and designed and printed a replacement one piece wind sensor there which uh just goes it's a basically it's a straight replacement for the kit part but mm -hmm. it's um it's obviously more sharply detailed and stuff um and then outside of that uh, i didn't really like the grenade launchers um so the, the kit the kit grenade launchers are a bit a bit soft and bleh. so I, I actually found on Colts 3D um, a set of 48 scale grenade launchers and um, just scaled them up to 35th um, and and printed them to see how they came out and uh, I have to say they they, they they actually came out pretty well so they will have to be mounted on there sometime. Um, and it comes with uh, little grenades. The actual, so you can load it if you want. It's just remarkable, isn't it? It's just... Well, the thing about that is you can print. You know, you can print all of these on their little mounts there, and you can paint them. And then, literally, if you want to load them, you can just snap them off, yep. and then they just, and then they just pop in, like so. <laughs> That's it. You know, tiniest little dab of varnish even would fix that in place. Mm. Um, but yeah, that, that that's just they're, they're just very very sharply molded uh, or printed. You know, it's, they're, they're really nicely detailed. So yeah, that's um, that's uh, that that's where we are with the Abrams. So the Abrams is sort of backburnered a little bit, but still sort of moving, if you like. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's uh, and then there's the um, obviously the uh, the June stuff that I've been I've been working on mm -hmm. um, tools and stuff. I, I've had a couple of weeks of of getting a few few tools. So if we can cover that, um, not been buying airbrushes again, have you? No, no. This is a display. This is a sander. Now, if you may remember, a couple of years ago, we we I got this Proxon sander. Yes, which is very nice. Uh, it's got a side to side action. Um, it's and it's got a mains, you know, power. Oh, good lord, yeah. But, you know, it's don't get me wrong. It's a, it's a really nice bit of kit, but it can be a little bit cumbersome to use. Yeah. Um, and and Dispy have just released this USB charged uh, electric sander. Um, and for me, the the biggest uh, benefit of this is that it's a reciprocating motion forward and backwards, um, which just makes it a much uh, much more accurate to use mm -hmm. um it's obviously being being usb powered and, and smaller it's less powerful it's not got a lot of torque it's got three mm -hmm. speed but you know I, I can stop it with my fingers no problem and then you can overload it and it stops itself but yeah um but it's a little reciprocating it's got about two millimeters but it's great for you know those those little areas you know, removing things like um, 
I tend to use them for removing things like um, uh, ejection marks in air intakes and things like that. Mm -hmm. Very useful for that. So, uh, yeah, I, do, it's, I think it's about, about 35 quid, I think I paid for this. And it comes with a, a box full of about seven or eight different heads, different shapes, and a few um, a few sheets of the, the self-adhesive abrasives for it. So, you know, for about 30, 35, 35 quid, I, I, I think it's a useful tool if you're... Um, if you're on the hunt for tools like I tend to be, and it comes in a little box like that, look, it's oh, a... the spy really know how to how to kind of like pack things, don't? Well, they, they do, uh, and yeah. I, I I then promptly open it upside down, look, and get it stuff everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it's yeah, it's so that's the little sort of presentation box it comes in, if you like, and it's even got a little cover for the and uh, that sits in there. There you go. So, what's that? What's that sound? Oh, hang about. That's JM Tool Envy. So he's going he's <laughs> yeah. to be, be ordering one of them. That's JM's credit card coming out. Yeah, exactly. Um, the other thing I got, one of the other things I got, is what the what on earth is that? You may say these are sold. I got these off of uh, eBay, and they're effectively called pill pill packets. Yes. Um, but the thing is, with each one, I mean, I think I got about 24 of these for about five pounds. With each one of these, you get a large section like that, which you can use as a disposable palette for mixing mm -hmm. stuff, mixing super glues and all sorts of glues. And then you cut these, you can cut these up if you want, and you get lots of little disposable Mixing ah, palettes, which are yeah. great, for, which are great for sort of uh, mixing, you know, oil washes and 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 things like that. So I thought, oh, we'll have a look at that and see. And I have to say, it's one of those little things that you see. And uh, I went, yeah. I mean, Dave says sea trays. Possibly they were sold as pill boxes to because they've got a lid on them that uh, closes down. Mm. Um, but but yeah, it just means you know, just use a pair of scissors and cut them up. You can cut them up into groups if you like. And um, so I sometimes cut these up into sort of a group of three, and I've got a, my oil wash in one, and then two things are thinner in the other. So um, mm -hmm. uh, just one of those little go. things that if, if if you know if people are looking around for, yep. Um, See, Mike Mike knows what they are. Um, yeah, MDF, well, they, or yeah. monitored dosage system. The monitor, look, get me teeth in. Monitored dosage system in the pharmacy trade. Although David Mummery says arrived late. Is Drew giving a masterclass on ice cube making? No, but he's a pretty cool guy. Hey, hey, hey. hey. there you go. So, yeah, so yeah. I mean, if, if people are sort of looking for that sort of thing, look on, look, look under sort of. Well, I guess, um, you know um seed trays or or you know I, I like i say i looked under pill pill trays mm -hmm. um on uh, on ebay and got these um and a less a, a very much less disposable thing that i've i've been using recently or for the last few years little beakers um little little um you know chemistry beakers again from from ebay took me my, my brother rory gave me a few of these five mil ones many years ago and i gradually sort of managed to lose them or break them over the years and it took me ages to track these down because i, I was looking for you know um uh cups and all this sort of thing and i, I think it was marcus nichols who actually said no what you need to put into ebay is beaker mm -hmm. to find what you need so there's little 10 mil ones there's some five mil ones again great for mixing paint in if you're mixing a paint for one model um i'll mix enough in one of these and then i can use parafilm m on top um to to seal it if you know you, you while you're building the model if you want to go back later on and and use more so i i've got a sort of i ended up with a pack of i ended up with five five of each five and ten mil then the other week because i mixed a lot of stuff myself thinners wise and things like that i looked and there was this little set here with uh a, 100, 50, 25, 10, and 5. They're glass. They yeah, glass. But, but it's, but it's uh, laboratory glass. Yeah. Yep. So it's, you know, it, it's it's really tough glass. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that was mm, like 11 or 12 quid for that, that pack there of, of 100 mil to 5 mil um, beakers. 
mm -hmm. um, but, but really, really useful. Mm. Um, just to get, again, these, these are the things that I, I use all the time in, in, you know, my, my modeling that I quite often think some people don't, you know, the word doesn't get out. Mm. If you like, so that's me putting the word out that um, these these little pill trays, monitor dosage systems, according to our Mr. Williams, um, are, are great for quick disposable mixing. And these can be great for because you because obviously they're, they're they're graduated as well, so you can measure. Um, you know, if I need to make fifty, you know, a new thing of the glue I make up up, you know, using a hundred mil is going to make it much easier to mix forty mils of it, isn't it? Mm. I'm not transferring stuff from bottle to, to beaker to beaker and stuff like that. So, just like I say, things to look at if people are are interested in finding that it's quality of life stuff rather than revolutionary. If you know what I mean, little things, yeah, little things that just make um, just make your modelling a bit, a bit a bit less kind of not stressful, but you know what I mean. It just yeah. everything just kind of moves along a bit nicer. I mean, I'd um, say the thing is, John, if I one of those five mil mm. is going to allow me to mix enough paint, if I need to mix a paint to camouflage probably a 48 scale model. Mm -hmm. And then if I haven't used it all, I'm, I think I'm going to need some later in the build. I just like put some parafil, parafilm M over the top, use parafilm M for what it was supposed mm. to be used for, mm. which was sealing. This sort ceiling of laboratory glass yeah. Yeah, exactly um, uh, and it's just you know it, it's just really really convenient it saves you because it means you don't have to find a bottle with a lid on it and mix it up mm -hmm. and you know you're just you're, you're working quickly because you, you don't you're not going to need it for more than one model mm -hmm. um and um uh I rush, I rush See, see. Dave, Dave says, my God, using parafilm M yeah exactly because I, I find it, I, I've always found it largely I don't like it for masking. No. Um, I know a lot of people get on with it great. I've never really got on with it for masking, no. so I tend no. not to use it for that, but I've always got some around. No. Um, Talking um, of masking, Simon Lewis asks, he says, JM, can you just remind what you use for masking clear parts? Thanks. Um, goodness me. Um, well, for the most part, it's either going to be um, reaches down... It's either going to be um, to me a tape, or um, I'm just seeing if I've got any in here, um, or magic tape. Um, goodness me, come on, man! Uh, I haven't got, I haven't got any. I've got my my thing of tapes here. There should be some magic tape in there, but there is. I, I tend to use that for edging canopies. Well, and, and you stole my thunder there, mate. Um, and also, uh, as Drew points out, um, there we go, and bare metal foil as well. Yeah, so um, no, I, I tend to use I, bare, bare metal foil is amazing for masking the edges out. Yeah. Um, it can be difficult to remove, and it does leave a residue behind. If it leaves a residue behind, you use a little, um, a little bit of lighter fluid and a Q-tip. The, these little fine Q-tips that I got off eBay again with the pointed mm. tip and stuff. Mm. Um, I've got hundreds of them here. Again, look around on eBay. Mm. Uh, I found the best thing for removing the adhesive, uh, the bare metal foil adhesive, is WD-40. Mm. So I spray a bit of WD-40 on the end of one of those, and and it'll lift that. It'll lift the adhesive straight off, and also it won't stain. Mm. You'd think that being a, a lubricant or whatever, it would it would stain the surface, but it tends to go away really quickly and 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 not leave any any stain it's you know itself on the surface mm -hmm. so um john and, and also there's so many i mean i will generally try to find a masking set for most models these days if there's one yeah. available i just think yeah. it's again it's it's those quality of life things that are worth a few quid to me although although being being kind of like um, you know uh people who think that they're clever we've we can make our own mask can't we drew mm. Well, yeah, uh, you know, I, I will, you know, I'm, I'm making, I make my own masks all the time. I, I yeah. mask and spray markings, mask it, or if I've got a design for the canopy, I'll use it to, to design my own masks and yeah. cut my own masks. So, yeah, um, but yeah Simon, long story short, um, if it's going to be, if it's going to be manual masking, I mean, yeah, to me, a tape or even frog tape, 
Um, I know that there can be a little bit of kind of intellectualizing to say that this stuff is completely different to smear tape. I don't think it is. Um, so no, I mean it's, it's the same with them. Um, I mean my my stuff I use for filling in is um, is kit tape, yeah. which is basically you know it is what we would call washi or kabuki tape, yeah. effectively. It's yeah. not quite as fine as, as Tamiya's stuff, but but it does the job. The yeah. other thing I also use a lot more nowadays, and I used for probably 25 years, I, I barely used it at all, is masking fluid. Yes. I use it all the time for filling stuff in now. Yep. You yep. know, I would I, traditionally, I would outline like with with tapes or bare metal foil and then use tape to fill in roughly. Mm -hmm. Now I just tend to get the masking fluid out and, and chuck that across. Um, yep. uh, and it just, cause it all, you know, it lifts off instantly. It's got no adhesive quality, so you're not going to rip anything up with it. Um, so yeah, I, I, I generally find that in, in this day and age, I use liquid mask an awful lot more than I ever used to again. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Question here. We've got John Connolly asks, is it really is it really needed to remove the carrier film on Edouard de Decals? No. <laughs> there we go. And the simple answer is is no. Um the they they tend to have a large area of carrier film over their decals. Um which I initially <coughs> excuse me. I initially wasn't very impressed with, and then I went. Yeah, but it kind of takes your eye away from the edge of the decal where people would normally look for a ridge. Do you know what I mean? Mm. If, if, if the actual if the actual periphery of the varnish is well away from the decal, it actually, and they're so fine that that varnish is so fine anyway mm -hmm. that with um, Microset and Microsol, you, it, it, it vanishes more or less anyway. Um, there, there's no overarching reason to remove the... Uh, 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 carrier film other than you can mm. and uh, I sometimes do but mm. I know I think our Mike Williams doesn't bother removing it and he's done quite a few um, uh, Edward kits with those decals and, and and they look just just fine so no there mm. isn't you don't it wasn't it wasn't a a baked in feature they deliberately did anyway mm. um, so no it's uh, should we dive on with some of the news from this week? Well, it's going, be, it's going to be quite compacted because we spent a long time talking about stuff. Well, it will it will get compacted. Um, so, uh, coming from uh, Andy's Hobby HQ in the his line of one sixteenth scale kits, it's the uh, the classic uh, M eleven three A one. Uh, in two versions, so either as a standard personnel character. That's an M113, or... John. Sorry? That's an M113. Yeah, sorry. M1... What did I say? M113A1. Oh, goodness me. It's been a long day. Um, M... M1... M113. Oh, yeah, but that one. Um, that that armoured personnel carrier. Um <clears throat> Absolute classic vehicle, and yeah, one sixteenth scale really is starting to. It's picking up its adherence, isn't it? Yeah, and and you know, this you know, finally we're seeing something in sixteenth scale that might actually pique my interest a little bit. Mm. You know, because I, I, I'm not that interested in World War Two armor, so the fact that we're moving forward now to um, you know, sort of Southeast Asia, stroke, you know, Europe, early eighties. Reforger, yeah. all that sort of stuff, um, and and the M113 is a, is a lovely size for a 16 mm. scale. You know, it's not a big vehicle at all. Um, so I think uh, I, I think that's a really nice, mm -hmm. really nice choice of subject. Yep. Um, uh, and in a scale that suits the subject. So yeah, um, no, absolutely. I'm a fan. I, I like it. I, I think that's for for me personally speaking, that's his best choice of release so far. I think that might be the kit that finally breaks your um, your not building one sixteenth scale duck. I think I think that might be the one that um, sees you tips you over the edge. So um, I mean, I, 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 again, like I probably wouldn't buy it. No, if somebody said, "Will you build this for us?" I would probably yeah. go, "Yeah, all right." Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, so the, the, it's kind of 
that 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 that's where I sit with that. I probably wouldn't buy it mm. um, just because it's so far out of my 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 sort of um, wheelhouse, if you like. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, as somebody says, you know, Scorpion Scimitar in 16th, again, perfect size for it. Scorpion Scimitar, FB432, all of those sorts of things would be perfect for 16th scale, mm -hmm. you know, because they'll still be, you know, they, they won't be much bigger than a 35th scale main battle tank. Yep. Um, um, this, uh, this next one, I definitely will be going out and buying because this is right up my Strausser. And oh my goodness me, this is. I think we talk, talked about this before, and this is um, Gecko's Lambro 550, um, which is just, I <laughs> just, I love these. I love these little, um, uh, little, I think they're uh, tuck tucks they're called, aren't they? Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, sorry, I've got, I've, sorry, I'm having flashbacks to the last Indiana Jones film and. Goodness me! I hope it is the last Indiana Jones film. Um, but yeah, th this is just a fabulous little subject. Uh, they're selling it as a Lambra 550 Saigon Shuttle Tricar with driver and passengers Vietnam War era. Talking of driver and passengers, there they are. And so you get some what look to be beautifully animated uh, figures there. Um, so yeah, this this it just it's just such a, an oddly little esoteric vehicle. Well, I say oddly esoteric. It's widely used. and <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, oddly esoteric. They only built a few million of them. Yes, um, I know. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's I, I like that. And, yeah, I'm, I will be, if, if they are at Scale Model World this year, I will be handing over Dosh for one of them because that just, that just amuses me greatly. Yeah. Um, Bit like my little mini art tempo, which I know you're all looking at me thinking you haven't finished that yet, JM. I've got Trizac now, I can finish it. So I see Dave Fleming there saying the British Army had a single M113 for evaluation. And what else did the British Army use the M113 for? Come on, kids. Come on. Striker? No, that was a scorpion, wasn't it? No. Go on. The one they they bought um Spike ER from Israel about 10, mm. 12 years ago. Yeah, and that was M113 platforms. So, mm -hmm. uh, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, uh, and Mike Williams, uh, yeah, Mike Williams says uh, James Bond getaway vehicle. Yep, uh, Octopussy. Um, I, I love that film. It's so naff, but um, absolutely brilliant. And uh, Sean Smith says, JM, have you seen Badgers 100, 135th? Um, one thirty fifth printed models. No, I haven't, uh, Sean. If you can ping they me, do, a... um, they, they, they do a massive range of models, and you can actually pick the scale you want them printed in. Um, and uh, I mean, the, the thing I, I have these days is because I've got such good printing equipment, I get a little bit sort of ornery about having to order something that's been three D printed for me mm. rather than just buying the STL and doing it myself. Mm -hmm. And now I completely understand why they do it. Um, but it just kind of, it, it kind of, I've, I've yet to reconcile myself to buying something that's been 3D printed for me when, when I've got this, the equipment at home to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, but they, I did see they'd done a, um, uh, a, a Challenger Crab and stuff, um, which is, mm. they look absolutely beautiful. Um, and like I say, you can, you can choose the scale you want them printed in. Um, uh, so, you know. Uh, as long as you're prepared to pay the price. So, um, we've also got coming up next, and it's a well, Drew, it's a kit that is literally right up your street because, um, I believe you, um, I believe you use one of these, um, and it's mini art, uh, and it is a 35th scale Ooh. lathe. Oh, no, I don't use them anymore. Oof, nasty. Don't you? No, I'm an, I'm an inspector, John. I don't. <laughs> Oh, right. All oh, right. You don't do I've got to get my hands dirty oh, right. on machines. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, okay. I mean, it's, a, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's again, for the, for their, for the, for the diorama freaks. Mm. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a really, really nice, uh, really, really nice subject, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Um, looks like a, a, an old Eastern European style, um, capstan lathe. Oh, see, I knew, I knew we'd get the expert. I knew we'd get the expert giving us. Fact, no, it's not, even a, it's not even a capstan lathe. It's a, it's a conventional lathe. So, yeah. Um, yeah, no, really, really, really nice. So you, you can see, 
um, our very own Mr. Pollard getting stuck into that and, and oh, having a whale really? all the time. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I uh, looks really nice. looks really cool. I really like mm -hmm. it. Um, uh, again, not probably not something I would I would build myself, but um, I, I, I certainly look forward to seeing what others who are more mm. um, into that sort of thing will, will, will do with it. Again, mm. this is the sort of thing that strikes me as, uh, you know, I, I, mini art doing it as a, as a kit is great, but it's the sort of thing that you can imagine being beautifully 3D printed. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that there to me looks like a 3D print, those, those renders. Um, so, uh, no, I think that's really cool. Mm. I think that's yeah. really cool. Um, I'm just trying to bring up the box art here at the moment. Uh, I, now suspect the be, I suspect there'll be a couple of mills and, and jig yeah. borers and stuff to come afterwards. Maybe. Oh goodness me, they they will they will run with this because it's it's one of those things that you can just mix and match it with other accessory sets. And um, yeah, absolutely brilliant from Mini Art. So um, yeah, uh, gets a, gets a big thumbs up from us. Um, the final news item for tonight, and we were very lucky to be uh, sent these because these are ahead of their actual uh, production, um, literally coming to here from just over the other side of the hill there in Bristol. And this is Model U, and they are well established in the model railway field for their 3D, for their 3D printed figures, scanned and printed figures, but they have now started to venture into military stuff. They have done some military stuff in the past, but now they're doing aircraft stuff. And they sent some of their figures that are doing Royal Air Force figures. These are 172nd scale. And, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's... It, it, <laughs> 3D printing is absolutely bonkers, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they've, the, these are quite fragile at the moment, and it's one of the bits of feedback that I gave to uh, Model U just to kind of say that you know that there are some areas that you might want to have a look at. But um, these, these, yep, um, I, I just, I'm just really kind of blown away by what 3D printing can do now. Um, and like I say, these are all 70 second scale. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, absolutely minute i know one of the that mug is actually semi hollow would you believe um and i know one of the things that people say about 3d printed figures is sometimes they they may lack some of the crispness of um conventionally sculpted figures but i would argue that i think it actually makes them more to scale so I think the, the the thing is as as you as you get smaller in 3D yeah. printing, the the kind of detail you're trying to reproduce starts competing with the layer lines. Yeah. Um, now the thing is, layer lines are so fine now that 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 you know a a light a light spray with Tamiya fine surface primer will just there you go you're ready to go you know mm -hmm. um, almost nothing layer line wise will be visible on that. Um, mm -hmm. and, and won't be visible if you from a typical model viewing distance anyway. No, you know if you if you if you're going to get um, you know on most people's screens at home, that 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 those figures will be fifteen to twenty times taller than they are in real life. Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, these... Quite quite often, photography of models doesn't do them any favors because it doesn't actually it doesn't accurately represent the real life experience of looking at them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and we've got some, uh, we, we were sent some 48 scale ones as well. Um, and again, that, you know, they're essentially the, the, the same figures just scaled up, which is the beauty of 3d printing is if you've got something that's, you know, it's a beautiful figure, then you can just pop it around the, the different scales and things. Um, and again, there there are there's the there are the figures with the haircut going on and the guy reading the newspaper. Those wicker chairs, um, oh, they are so fragile. I've already broken one, um, 
but it just gives you um, it just gives you an idea of what 3D printing can do now. And this this is the set that I am particularly pleased uh, to see, uh, and that's a set of WAFs. Mm. Um, I don't think anybody's ever. I know. Um, I know. Uh, I think ICM have done some uh, female ferry pilots, um, but to actually have uh, wafts represented as as figures is absolutely brilliant. And I know talking to the uh, people at, um, at Model U, they are looking at doing some more um, female military subjects as well. Um, you know, so this th these these are the figures that i will probably be be painting up first because um i just think it's i think it's a brilliant move and um yeah and i've just got i just got to become a bit a bit a bit more of a competent figure painter quite frankly but um but the other thing i like about 3d printed figures is that you're not having to deal with conventional uh, mold seam lines no 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 um, which... oh, yeah, but, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the, the worst thing I can see a few, um, I, I can see a few supports there that need need yep. trimming and sanding away. Yeah, um, but even even those are, uh, are negligible. So yep. um, no, that's really that's uh, that, that's that's really nice. Yep. No, so we are very uh, indebted to uh, Model U for sending us these. And like I say, if you pop along to their... These aren't available uh, just yet, but if you pop along to their website, modelu3d.co.uk, have a look, because there's bound to find something there that's going to pique your interest. Um, but yeah, got to become a bit more, a bit better at figure painting, mate. So... Um, um, i start practicing. Yeah, I know. Best start practicing. Um, we have we've reached twenty five minutes, and I've suddenly realised that my bell fell off the desk earlier on in the show. So, Drew, Bing, Bing. Any other business? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, I did pick up th th this week's acquisitions include the Liberator, yeah, which is just stunning. Mm-hmm. Airfix knocking out the park as uh, as usual these days, and I did pick up the ICM Marauder, which is just oh, we do have one more thing to talk about. Jaw dropping. I've just, I've just remembered. Um, I've just remembered. We we mentioned this shortly before the um, before the show started, and that is Edward doing a seventy second scale P fifty one D. Now it's not news in itself. But they've announced uh, that they're close to um, shipping it uh, around about August or late July. But um, your thoughts, Drew, because I know you like a Mustang, and bearing in mind this is Edward, we know they <laughs> that we're going. We know they're going to bring their A game to this, don't we? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, the the, the the good thing about Edward is Edward only have an A game. Mm. <laughs> you know, there's no, there's no A team and B team like there, there would be with Trumpet or Hobby Boss. Edward mm. only have an A game. We know that the 48 scale D is is just, you know, for, for the time being, has more or less closed the, you know, closed the book on P51Ds. Mm -hmm. There's really no reason why the 72nd one won't do the same. Um, I mean, I, I do I, Royal class. I've got a few Royal class kits, and I generally find that. They're not that convincing to me as packages. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they tend to include lots of options but, and some kind of gift, a glass or something like that. Um, and I'm really just interested in the models. So yeah. I think you know it's a, it's a nice it's a nice collectible, but I just I'm I'm very much a, show me the plastic kind of guy. Yeah. Um, so I suspect that there'll be a dual boxing as well as this royal class, and the dual boxing is you know the dual combo is what I will be looking at. I think. Yeah. Um, but uh, but you know it's uh, you know you, you you can't say that Edward haven't got their marketing game. Um, well, I'm, I was going to say start. that there will. There will inevitably be those people who are going to roll their eyes and say, oh, my goodness me, do we need another P51D Mustang? To which I would say, well, you may not need it, but I think Edward do because it yeah. will sell bucket loads for them. So, 
You're never going to catch a cold on a Mustang Spitfire <laughs> 109 or 190. We yeah, say this yeah. every single time. We do. You're never going to catch a cold on those subjects. No, no absolutely. End, so, end um, of story. Yeah. End of story. I'm um, looking for. I'm looking forward to it because um, I will be eyeing up um, RAF or Commonwealth versions. So um, I do. I really do fancy doing a Canadian one. I, yeah. I just, yep. Yeah. And don't forget the uh, 40 H scale B is imminent as well. Yeah, that, that's already been built um, yep. for um, for uh, sort of marketing purposes. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, um, like I say, it's um, it, it's a nice marketing thing, and, and Edward will sell all they make. I've got no doubt. Um, but I'll, I'll wait for the actual plastic, if you know what I'm saying. You know, the, the mm -hmm. actual more um, just options and 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 and, and kits. Rather than a royal class, mm. so right there you go. He's found it. I found it. I had to get on the floor and pick it up. Um, any other business? No, I don't think so. No, no, no. not from me. No. no. Um, I'm just having a think. I had a I had a very good walk today. I uh, went to a place that you and I know uh, very well, Drew Seven Beach. Um, oh yeah. And let me just see if I can uh, let me just see if I can pull the pictures up here a second. Um, oh no, the pictures the pictures are already up. Um, yeah, I had a I had a, a lovely walk at um, uh, Seven Beach today. The sun was out. It actually felt uh, actually felt like proper spring now. Um, you know, and uh, Seven Beach does not disappoint. Um, uh, here we go. Uh, let me just. There we go. So that's look. That's looking out towards uh, my neck of the woods. So I am literally uh, on the horizon on the right hand side there. Um, that's my friend uh, Lucinda's dog Daisy, mad as a box of frogs. But there we go. And um, that's looking out towards the second seven crossing, the the new one, and that's Wales in the distance. You could pretty much say mad as a box of dogs and still be right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and. Um, and that was lunch. What a surprise! That's Shirley's Cafe. We've been there, and it's 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 mm. a lovely place. And um, yeah, what a surprise! Jacket potato, cheese and beans, and um, chocolate cake as well. Oh, um, I haven't been there for a year. Well, I haven't been there since 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 my misadventures last year. So it was lovely to be back there today. And again, that's a view out towards um, uh, Wales and the Second Seven Crossing, which you can walk underneath it. I don't, I can't remember if we did that, but um, no, I don't think we did. No, and um, and there's a nice panor panoramic shot, and um, and that's me and friend Lucinda. So <laughs> um, so there we go. It was it was a good day out, and um, yeah, just just to be out and about and walking suitably refreshed suitably refreshed is a very good way of putting it so um anyway on that note um i think that's it drew um yep. um Until fingers next... crossed i might do a pop-up live during the week so um see what kind of mood i'm in <laughs> and uh you're around next sunday or, or... Uh, i i i I mean, I you know, I'm like these days. I can't plan that far ahead, but I, at the fine. moment, at, at the moment, there's no reason I won't be. We'll try and we'll try and come up with something next week, or do some kind <laughs> of modelling thing, or or whatever. Yes, yeah. there's, there's no reason at the moment I won't be. Yep. Put it that way. Yeah, excellent. Well, and I also look forward to seeing you at some stage because I haven't seen you in um, a year. Well, apart from apart from our trips to uh, Jadlam in uh, Glastonbury, I haven't seen we we haven't had a proper beer night for five years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, terrifying, isn't it? Yeah, that that will get uh, that will get rectified at some stage. So you've um, really got to tell me. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Anyway, on that note, a big thank you to everybody who's tuned in tonight really do appreciate you coming along and watching uh two uh middle-aged men from somerset um you know waffle away um we will like i say do some pop-up lives hopefully during the week um and then hopefully we will be back next sunday to eat an hour of your life andrew what's up no nothing nothing no to eat an hour of your life for eat yeah. an hour of your life yeah so on that note from myself and Mr. Manton here. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay out of trouble, and we'll see you.
very soon. Take care, all. Bye for now.